Right, so, uh, hi guys, and welcome to my quick video uh, discussing the ESL1 Clone 2016 major groups. Um, I'm also going to discuss the seeding for these groups, and I kind of wanted to open with the seeding first and foremost, um, which is why, as you can see in front of me, I've got the HLTV dot org um, breakdown of the seeding pools and the groups that were then drawn so the big thing i wanted to talk about with seeding first and foremost before we kind of get into the groups and break the groups down is the, the ridiculous nature of the seeding pools in a game like counter strike global offensive where a huge amount can change in four months strength of teams can change massively in four months the makeup of the teams i.e the rosters can change massively in four months um and just in general, the, the the landscape of the scene changes hugely in such a short space of time. It's just how esports works. It's how it's always worked. And it makes seeding based on a tournament that happened for, at the very least, three to four months ago, maybe longer in certain cases. It's a system which doesn't really... It's not conducive to producing fair or, uh, or, or representative groups, groups that are representative of the actual skill levels of the team. So let's actually look at the seeding pools first and foremost. The first thing you'll notice when you look at the first seeding pool, so I'll just, uh, the first thing you notice when you look at the first seeding pool is liquid. Yup, TL. And honestly, it, it's hard to, to kind of justify Team Liquid being in this position right now. Um, I think most people will agree in saying that Liquid are far from even probably a top 10 team right now. Um, their performance at E-League was incredibly poor. Um, ever since losing Simple, they've looked lo they've looked lost themselves as a team. Um, and Liquid clearly don't deserve to be in the first seeding pool. Moving on to the second seeding pool, we have CLG. CLG have been a in a huge slump as of late. Um, they've really struggled. E-League probably is the best performance that they've managed to put together since the Major. Um, they've been on a general downward trend since the Major, and we've just heard that they've traded JDM for Kusta, which you can't look at it as anything other than a downgrade right now. Um, whatever you want to say about Kusta's potential as a player, right now he is nowhere near the same level of player as JDM. Um, so CLG yet still managed to retain their second pool seeding. Moving on to the third pool. The third pool and the fourth pool are a little bit more... Um, I mean, they're the pools of the teams that came from the qualifier, and they're, you know, they're relatively up for discussion. Um, I think everybody would agree G2 probably don't deserve to be in the fourth pool. I think, honestly, if you broke all these teams down and did a ranking of them, most people would put G2 probably in the bottom end of the second pool, um, maybe top end of third. Um, but e either way, I think G2 are, are, are the one team here that in the third and fourth pool that kind of stick out as being way too low. I mean, if it, I mean, you can look here. HLTV have G2 themselves as number five in their top five rankings in the world. Um, I mean, it, it, up for discussion, but I would agree that G2 are, are way too low down being at the bottom end of the fourth pool or being in the fourth pool at all. A couple of other points to kind of make are, I mean, Virtus Pro and Fnatic are probably two teams that you could discuss whether or not they kind of deserve to be in the second pool. Um, Fnatic, simply because they've looked pretty average since the loss of Olof Meister. Um, obviously, we've just learned that Olof Meister is coming back, but when these pools were put together and the teams were drawn, that wasn't known. Uh, and so, again, you can say Fnatic maybe didn't deserve their second pool seed, depending on what their roster was. VP, been in a bit of a slump as of late. Bar the star, out of performance, been relatively underwhelming overall. Poor offline, better uh, at LAN, but still not a top, still not a top five team in the world for sure. Uh, and so their second pool possibly could be up for discussion, depending on where you rate some of the other teams that ended up in the third and fourth pool. I mean, considering that you would probably drop Liquid and CLG down to the third and fourth pool straight away, probably means VP and Fnatic would retain a top two uh, seeding pool positioning but what this kind of illustrates is before you even look at the groups that were drawn you can already see that there's issues with where people have been seeded moving on to the actual groups themselves uh nope that's i want that at the end moving on to the actual groups themselves um <laughs> we can see that the kind of the the unbalanced nature of the seeding pools has resulted in unbalanced groups so we'll look at the groups chronologically we'll start off with group a Team Liquid, Virtus Pro, Mouse Sports, and Team Envy. This is 
the second weakest group i would say um an argument can be made for it being the weakest group potentially liquid have fallen off a cliff since the last major their performances have been incredibly poor um i mean you can say that with the acquisition of jdm and the fact that simple is going to be standing in on the roster swapping jdm and simple for adren and Cooster is a huge upgrade uh, and so liquid will be going into the tournament with a hell of a lot more of a ceiling than than previous definitely than at e-league um and so liquid liquid are a bit of a wild card in this group i think it's incre it's going to be difficult to kind of predict their strength coming into the major we will have the esc tournament um the esports championship series finals to kind of gauge them as a team and, and to see them gel so we might have a better idea when the major actually comes around but right now you've got to put them down as a wild card team with an incredibly high ceiling so it's difficult to kind of predict what we're going to get from liquid at this major virtus pro again they're a team that's been in a slump as of late um i mean you can look at star ladder and say that they won that tournament the only other legit team attending were navi and admittedly it's still impressive to beat navi but i i wouldn't read too much into that tournament result it was a cis only tournament vp have been known to turn it on for lan versus online so it's unsurprising that they're doing better at lan over the recent months but again i i would still kind of put them maybe in the top eight sort of teams in the world that kind of bracket um but still they're not they're not world beaters by any stretch of the imagination at the moment the one thing that you, it goes for virtus pro is that they're difficult to beat in a series but considering the group stages are going to be best of one i think virtus pro are actually in danger in this group of, of potentially not making it out um mouse sports the Nico show. I mean, what more can you kind of say about Mouse Sports? I mean, other players did step up in the qualifier and put in some decent maps. Um, Next put in a, a, a decent map or two. It's still the Nico show. Mouse Sports is still a team that seems to underperform despite the perceived skill of their roster. Uh, and I think at this point, you've got to kind of come to terms with the fact Chris J, Next, some of these players who have been hyped up previously are not going to be the superstars that some people seem to perceive them to be um they're a they're a team that's going to flirt with top 10 i'm not sure i definitively put them in my top 10 right now uh and so again it's it's we're looking pretty much at teams that are either outside the top 10 in this group or maybe flirting with kind of like the nine eight positions 10 nine eight positions team envy again they're a team that i think it's difficult right now to gauge their roster strength they did pretty well at the qualifier um i mean if we go back here they managed to come out the qualifier in the in the fourth seeding pool so it's not like they they 3-0'd the qualifier or did anything um super spectacular um and so like i say team envious again another team that i they if they were if i were to make a top 10 ranking ranking right now they'd be flirting with the 10 9 8 sort of positions so group a you can already see pretty much no solid top 10 team in there virtus pro probably are the only team i would definitely put inside my top 10 and then mouse sports and envy would be depending on where i rank other teams right now and and whether you did the ratings based on sort of the last month's form or the last three months form i'm not sure where mouse sports and envious would sit as for who i reckon is going to get out of this group um I actually think this group is a really big toss-up because it's best of one and because these teams do have potentially pretty high ceilings i think this group is probably the hardest group to predict who's going to get out of this get out of this one if i had to 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 take a guess right now i think the safest bet overall for getting out of the group would probably still be virtus pro um just because they're a consistent roster who's shown consistently good land performances or at least decent land performances even with their offline woes winning star ladder definitely raises their stock a lot in in most people's books and in my eyes um and i think virtus pro particularly with snacks playing better in recent months and biali actually having some good maps as well i think they've got enough to get themselves out of this group and and seeing as they're the only team i can kind of make a, a safe bet on i'll put them as going out of the group in first place actually can we let me open up a notepad so i can kind of write down my predictions so i don't uh so i don't lose track of them okay so so on uh so for group a i've got vp coming out i've got vp coming out at number one um so for number two that's where this gets super super muddied i actually think 
Mouse Sports, Envious, and Liquid. Out of those three teams, Envious and Liquid, I think, have a higher skill ceiling than Mouse Sports. So I'm probably going to have to say I don't see Mouse Sports getting out of this group. They've also, Mouse Sports, historically struggled to make it out of groups of majors. Um, this lineup at the last major struggled to get out of a group that they probably should have seen themselves as having a good chance of getting out of, considering they played NIP in a best of three with Threat standing in. I'm going to have to say I don't see Mouse Sports getting out of this group. It's still the Nico show. There's still not enough consistency from any of the other members to kind of back up Nico's hard carry performances. So I don't see Mouse Sports making it out of this group. Um, particularly not when Mouse Sports kind of modus operandi is pretty much to use Nico as just a, sh a battering ram. And the wins they do get, it's when Nico goes ham and outskills the opponent really hard. With Envious and Liquid, it's going to be really hard for him to outskill the multiple skilled players on, on these two lineups who can go off. Um, as for between Team Envious and Liquid, I'm going to have to go with Envious simply because they have more of a body of work recently considering the the uh, clone qu offline qualifier and the improved performance at Malmo where they made it out of the groups. I'm going to have to give it to Envious just because they've got more of a body of work recently than Liquid do. I still think Liquid have an incredibly high ceiling. I may even be controversial and say that I think Liquid's skill ceiling might even be higher than Envious's. I know that's going to be super controversial considering Envious, you know, I mean, just, just look at this, like, roster. A NBK, Happy Kenny S, and Apex are all skilled players. I think NBK has fallen into that kind of more supportive player role. I don't think Happy's the, ever going to be the player that he was at his peak. And so the, the two legit stars I see on that team are Kenny S and Apex. They're the two that I think have to go off for, for Envious to succeed. Whereas when we roll across and look at the Liquid lineup that's going to attend... Hiko, at one point, one of the better players in the world, still an incredible clutch player and still one of, in my opinion, the best clutch players in the world. We know Nitro and Elise can be an incredible entry duo. I mean, Nitro is struggling to find form right now, but we know they can both be incredible. And then JDM and Simple are both incredibly high skilled, highly skilled players. JDM, bar the last sort of like couple of months where he's been a bit shaky since the major, he's been the best NA player for my money over the past year or so, maybe past nine months. And we all know Simple has the potential to be the best player in the world. Straight up, he, he's mad skilled with the AWP and the rifles. So yeah, I think if, if, if I was to kind of put a caveat on this, I would probably put Liquid as like my dark horse for this group. So I'm going to put Liquid at three just, just to show you that I think they do have a chance of getting out of this group. Um, but I, I'm going to say VP and Envious coming out one and two uh, for group A. Group B is the most stacked group by far. You've got the best team in the world, Luminosity. You've got Fnatic, who were previously the best team in the world, who now have Olofmeister returning, so they actually have their full lineup back, which is incredibly scary. FaZe Clan, who look massively improved as of late, and taking on this kind of YOLO approach of just running out and taking Angels works for them because they have an incredibly skilled lineup. And everyone knows what's been going on with G2 lately. A runners-up performance at the ESL Pro League. Um... And just they've been looking dominant ever since. Uh, they've been crushing online. They've been doing really well offline. I mean, this qualifier probably was a little bit of a shock for them because I think they probably would have expected to go 3-0 in this qualifier. Um, but they were they were still pretty uh, pretty comfortable coming out of the qualifier. They didn't really the games they won were all fairly fairly convincing. Um, so yeah, I've been I've been pretty impressed with G two lately. They'll be they'll have been surprised to lose to Gambit Gaming, but I, I wouldn't read too much into that loss. Who do I see coming out of this group? Uh, th this group is hard to call for the opposite reason of Group A, where it doesn't really seem like there's many particularly strong, or at least strong right now teams in Group A. Whereas Group B has a lot of strong teams. If you went on body of work, it would be pretty easy to put Luminosity and G2 coming out of 1 and 2. But with the return of Olof Meister for Fnatic, it makes it way, way harder to call. Um, and then even with the improvement of FaZe, I think in a best of one, FaZe can match up against G2. Because G2 at the moment, it's the Shocks and Scream show. Particularly Shocks is going super ham recently. Uh, the guy is legitimately in god mode. This might be one of the most dominant individual runs of form we've seen in CSGO. I think Kenny S would probably only be the kind of comparable one in terms of like the ridiculous the ridiculous individual performances this guy's putting in on a consistent basis. The problem is FaZe are a ridiculously skilled lineup who if if Shocks and Scream don't play well and FaZe have a couple of two to three players who do go off, I think a FaZe G2 game because of the styles of play could be very unpredictable in the best of one. 
we're gonna have to put luminosity coming out in number one like i don't i don't think there's anything they're the best team in the world still right now um i don't think you can bet against them in this group even though they do have a strong group i think particularly phase and g2 are going to struggle against luminosity because luminosity have such a structured and strategical way of playing i think they'll be able to kind of phase and g2 aren't just going to be able to run out take aim jewels and win them all the time luminosity not only are probably equally if not more skilled than these two teams but they have a a, a tactical foundation to back it up so luminosity are going to come out of this group number one as for who's coming out in number two i think it, uh, obviously if you'd have asked us a few months ago with full strength Fnatic we'd say Fnatic every time I don't think Fnatic are going to instantly be back at full strength with Olaf Meister returning to the lineup I think Olaf Meister as an individual is probably going to be not at the same level that he was I think that everyone's got to accept that if we look at how strong they were at the last major with Olaf Meister not playing so great because of his wrist injury I actually think the current G2 lineup would probably have beaten that Fnatic lineup can, with the caveat that Scream and Shocks continue performing the way they do. I'm going to put it number two. I'm going to cop it out a little bit here. I'm going to put Fnatic slash G2. I think that those are the two that are most likely to make it out. In fact, no, I'm going to I'm gonna commit. I'm not going to be boring. I'm going to commit and say I reckon G2 are going to come out of this group number two. And I'm going to put Fnatic as kind of my third team who I think can, can potentially... Uh, could potentially come out number two here and i think have a good enough chance for me to not be confident in saying g2 number two I, even then phase clan i think have a chance to take a best of one off of off of fanatic or g2 definitely maybe not luminosity but they definitely have a chance of taking a best of one off fanatic and g2 i think this group is going to be messy i don't think it's going to be clean where two teams cleanly come out of the group i think there's going to be teams taking best of ones off each other and it's going to be it's it's going to be a weird one. I think we may see someone come from from the lower end of the bracket and and come all the way through and end up coming out in second. Because um, I could see I don't know. Let's say Fnatic and Phase play each other. I can see Fnatic losing that opener and then maybe coming th up from the lower bracket. It, it's going to be hard for whatever team whatever team comes out second in this group. They're going to have earned their spot because it, it's a really really stacked group. Moving on to Group C. Who do we now let's let, let's not be around the bush group c is incredibly weak it's even weaker than group a group a is a lot of teams with decent skill potential flirting around the top 10 you know could could break into there any moment group c has a slumping clg who have been incredibly poor since the last major the recent e-league is their best performance in in months in my opinion and they've lost their best player since then uh, CLG, I think you, you've got to confidently say are going to not be a top 10 team anymore. Um, they're going to, at the very least, take time to gel with Kusta. And I'm I'm not convinced that that's going to work. I mean, a lot of the stories are suggesting that Kusta on selfless was pretty much, uh, pretty much led around by the dick uh, and told where to go, what to do. That's not going to happen on CLG. Um, they will probably build around him like they built around JDM, um, which may fit kusta more but i'm not convinced so i i think we're gonna i think i'm safely gonna put clg at the bottom of this group astralis gambit and dignitas now usually this would be a super clear-cut thing for astralis but they've got glaive standing in i think glaive is an incredibly odd choice as a stand-in as he's an in-game leader and they've already got an in-game leader in the form of carrigan they've got a lot of structure anyway astralis they have a very defined play style they know how they're going to play every game and so i think it's confusing why you would drop glaive in there surely the better decision would be to drop a more skilled player into a system that you already have and just let him be a wild card let him go out there and, and drop frags and see what he can do I, I think it's an odd decision to put glaive in there i don't think it's the right approach to, to to the stand in i might have even preferred to see them use zonic zonic did incredibly well at e-league i would have maybe even rather see them use zonic as a stand in if, if they were going to go with a stand in where they weren't going to pick somebody up with mad with a lot of skill zonic would have been a better choice in my opinion um obviously maybe they don't want they prefer zonic's kind of coaching ability outside the game but they've already got carrigan as the in-game leader in game i don't see why zonic can't just slot in uh, and play as that fifth but I'm still going to put Astralis coming out of this group first. I think if if the other teams around them were a little bit stronger in this group, then possibly they they possibly I think they might not come out of the group first. They might have more issues. 
I think Dignitas haven't been good as of late. They kind of squeaky bummed through the qualifier. Um, they didn't look convincing in some of their games. And I think Dignitas, ever since kind of not qualifying for the last major again, I think they've looked like they've been in a, on a bit of a downward slope. Um, one thing I will say for Dignitas is picking up Cajun B has been a good pickup for them. He performed very well at the qualifier. He looks like he can be more of a consistent fragger, which is, I think, what they need alongside a player like Config. Kirby obviously had kind of developed into that big time fragger, but replacing him with Cajun B is not necessarily a bad thing. I think overall it probably is a downgrade for Dignitas, but, you know, who knows? Uh, I think that team still has some decent potential, but they're struggling to realize it right now. Um, between Gambit and Dignitas, who's going to come out of this group second? I think it's actually a pretty hard decision. Um, Gambit have this really weird grinding style. It's kind of almost Luminosity esque at times. Um, where they, they want to get the man advantage and then play good Counter-Strike based off of a man advantage. It's the way that they've they've played throughout the qualifier. It's the way that they played beforehand. Um, they've got some skill. Uh, I mean, Mo has, has, Mo, Mo, however you want to say it, has kind of been impressing me as a player. I think he's quite a skilled player. They've got some uh, some a decent amount of experience with Dosia and Adren. I think this team actually can give Dignitas and CLG a good game. The way that Dignitas as well lose games, I think Gambit's grinding style is going to be difficult for Dignitas to get, deal with. So I actually have Gambit Gaming coming out of this group second. Um, and I'm not even going to kind of put the caveat of, of putting Dignitas at number three. I think don't, I don't think Dignitas are in a good spot right now. Um, at the qualifier, it took some big performances from individuals and some huge rounds. I mean, I think everybody saw that Rubinio 3v1 clutch. Um, I'm, I'm not convinced Dignitas are going to do it at the major. Moving on to Group D, which again is is kind of <laughs> a lot stronger uh, than, than Group A and C. Um, I think even if you took the strongest teams from Group A and C and put them together, they still might not be as strong as group, Groups B and D are. Um, which I mean, I think is is indicative of the of the poor seeding. Navi are going to come out of this group first. I mean, I, I it's not super clear cut because of how improved NIP have been over over recent weeks and months. Um, oh God, I'm messing up doing all my typing now. Um, I don't think it's super clear cut. I definitely think in a best of one, NIP could could take a map off Navi easily, particularly if they got the right map. I think. Um, I mean, Na'Vi aren't going to let Cash through, so Nip aren't going to be able to get Cash, which I think has been their best map. Um, and potentially the map pool clashes aren't great for Nip. I mean, Train, I think, is a pretty strong strong map for Na'Vi, which is also a, a map Nip have been playing. Nuke may be where Nip want to play Na'Vi. Um, Nuke hasn't been a map that NIP have been playing a lot recently, but historically they've always been super good on it, so maybe they can pick it up for the Major. I don't know. But I have Na'Vi coming out, I think, first in this group. I think in, in more scenarios than not, Na'Vi come out of this group in first. And again, we've got to, I think, fairly comfortably put Nick in Nip in second. I think this is the clearest cut group to call. I don't think there's going to be any chance for Optic Gaming or Flipside to be able to win enough best of ones. Optic ran NIP, you know, pretty close to E-League in a couple of games. Uh, particularly in the semi-finals. But then come the finals navi kind of blew uh navi nip blew out g2 who are a much better team than optic are optic are probably the most improved na team in recent months and maybe the best na team right now um but i still don't think it's going to be enough there's still too much inconsistency from their stars outside of mixwell stanislaw stanislaw and rush i don't know seem to be able to put it together but at different times and inconsistently and maybe only for a half they're developing into, particularly Rush, I think, is developing into a solid entry fragger. I don't think it's going to be enough by the time this major rolls around. And But I, I think it'll be incredibly interesting to watch Optic as part of their growth. Because I, I really do think they have kind of proven a few haters wrong and been able to grow into quite a decent team and probably the best NA team right now. Flipside, I mean, I thought it was a miracle that they made it this far. They had to beat, uh, who is it? They had to beat Immortals and I think it was Hellraisers to get here. Um, which is kind of a... Yeah, they did. They beat Hellraisers and Immortals to get here, which is a feat in itself, because Immortals and Hellraisers, I think, are both kind of potential top 10 teams right now. 
So very well done on them to getting this far, but I mean, look at what they've got to work with. They have very, very little skill to work with in that lineup. Shara is straight up appalling. He's just a bad player. Markalov seems to be developing into this kind of veteran presence that's good for consistency, good for clutches, and can occasionally put the big map in, which I think is great. And I think it's great for him as well in terms of his legacy. He was one of the, the best 1.6 players, and uh, and now he's kind of like making his mark on go more consistently. World Edit, we know, is a, is a skilled orper, but... It, uh, He's very hit and miss. He'll he'll hit crazy flicks that you're like, wow, how did he hit that? And he'll miss the shots that he should be hitting, which are just like straight up holding an angle. Um, but he's definitely got some skill. Waylander, I don't know what to make of him in this team. I thought he was a decent player in Gambit. I didn't think he was the best player in Gambit, and I thought it was a weird pickup for Flipside, considering he's not, uh, you know, Ukrainian. He's he's Finnish. Like I thought it was a bit of an odd pickup. I think this Flipside team is probably the worst team attending the major. Um, so I don't have a lot of hope for them even picking up a win, to be honest. They have this very sh set and strict style with Blade as the in-game leader. It's the only way they seem to have any success is with this very, very set style of in-game leading. Uh, very strict, very uh, existence-esque, where it's it's hard micromanagement. Um, I mean, I, I've heard discussions of the way that the Blade in-game leads is he breaks the map up into quadrants. And he specifically kind of references each quadrant depending on how he's calling. Um, which is a very, very kind of scientific approach to in-game leading. Um, when you haven't got skilled players, maybe it's the only way to do it. Um, but yeah, I don't see them having much of a chance in this group. I mean, if we scroll down to the quarterfinals, what does this make the quarterfinals looking like? We've got VP, Envious, Luminos, TG2, Astralis, Gambit, Nami, and Nip. I mean, obviously it depends totally on, on draws. Um, but with who I've got coming out at one and who I've got coming out at two, I think this is going to be a tournament where the teams it, coming out first in the group is going to be very important. Um, all of the first place teams are going to want to avoid Nip and G2 and going to want to get Envious and Gambit. I think if Nip or G2 get Astralis or VP, then it's probably going to be Nip or G2 through to the quarters, through to the semi, sorry. Again, it depends on draw. I think if VP played Envious or Gambit, they would probably win that series. Maybe Envious would be... Uh, oh, they're in the same group, so that can't happen. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, pretty much, I think... I think we're going to see probably Luminosity, Na'Vi, and Nip, I think, are the three most likely to make deep runs towards the finals. Outside of them, it starts becoming super hard to predict. I think the problem is right now in CSGO, we've got kind of three or four teams, Astralis maybe if they were at full strength, who are consistent, strong, the definitive top four in the world. And then outside of that, we've got a lot of highly skilled teams or teams that are looking really good right now who could potentially cause some upsets. You know, that definitely includes a team like G2. Um, it, I mean, it would have included teams like Immortals if they'd have made it this far, but they didn't. Even Hellraisers, I think. Um, the problem is, I think we've got some of the teams that have made it through, like Flipside and Gambit and even Dig, are teams with lower ceilings that seem to be able to pull it out a little bit more when it comes to actually qualifying for that big tournament. So... I think we're most likely to see a Na'Vi, Nip, Luminosity, some combination of those three in the final. I think Astralis with a stand-in, I think they'll probably, they'll get out of groups. Maybe they'll win their quarterfinals matchup depending on who they get. I think it'll be important for Astralis to come out of this group first, and they're very lucky in the fact they've got an easy group, which will allow them to do that. So I would say I think we're going to see semi-finals of Astralis, Na'Vi, Nip, Luminosity. With one of those teams probably not making it depending on on draws and who they play in the in the quarters because obviously nip could end up actually playing luminosity and and you know that'd be a great series but it would knock one of the better teams out coming into the semis um as for an overall winner i think luminosity still have to be the favorites um dominant at e-league dominant pretty much everywhere since the last major apart from getting knocked out of malmo um they seem to pretty much win every tournament they attend right now going to be hard to see past them but i definitely think this is a, a major where we've got some potential for interesting matchups once we get to the playoffs one more note uh, about the seeding just to finish off is look at the potential different groups that we could have had 
Um, I'm going to, you know, you can pause the video and look at it now. I'm not going to talk about it too hard. This is actually, um, this, this, this picture in, itself was put together by, um, uh, who's the guy who, um, basically runs hltv.org. I've forgotten his name, but I'll link his Twitter in the description because, um, you know, his suggestions for different seedings, um, are good and, and make a lot of sense. And he kind of shows the potential different groups we could have had which which would have been a lot fairer and, and made for i think for better group stages i think the group stages of this tournament are going to be a bit of a dud in the sense that a and c look pretty dull and b and d look in look interesting but a bit stacked particularly b i think b is going to be by far the most interesting group uh to watch and yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to this major i think it's going to be a good one um after columbus which was i think one of the best majors we've had I'm excited to see if, if a team like Liquid or, or whatever can make another deep run, if we can get that kind of high-skilled surprise team. Um, if they can get a good draw, probably can make it all the way. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, like and favorite, comment, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.